Some people think that my claim to fame is my no hitter and one hitter in the same day. It was just a blessing, that's all. We just had a great team behind us and we could hit the ball as well. Sports was in our family, uh, much to my mother's dismay. She thought I ought to just be sewing and doing the usual lady things. I did some of those, but also I worked in my dad's feed store. Guys in the feed store every morning would check the scores, and I had my favorite, which were the Red Sox, as well as we had a good church program for softball. So I grew up doing sports. Well, I went to BYU at about the same time that Elaine went to school. We traveled through those classes together. And of course, Lou was working at that time and teaching, so I knew her as an instructor. They didn't really ask me to be in charge of women's athletic. I was basically asked to just keep track of what was going on. Well, sports days for the women were just let's get together and play another school. Sometimes we'd go to Colorado, then you'd compete for one day, intermingle, play, and then you that was your season, and then you were finished. And that's kind of what we did. We had maybe a few days of practice. The coaches were our faculty members who used their cars to get us to where we're going and we compete all day long and then call it a day and go home. It was a fun competition, but it wasn't elite competition. We were competing with the best we had. They must have been incredibly patient as they tried to bring people along with the concept that women really deserve the right to participate at the highest levels. Having to work around the men's program and their extensive opportunities. The focus was on them, mostly. Well, we, of course, were delighted to have a passage of the t title line that would give us an opportunity to compete nationally and would also expand women's sports. Title IX required certain requirements to be considered competition that is worthy of what a school should have. And so almost all the schools had to make some adjustments to make sure the women got the same opportunities as the men. They asked the question, why didn't the women practice and play in the Marriott Center since it was available and they were told that the women didn't want to, which was completely untrue. No one contacted the women. It was the male athletic director that answered the questions concerning the women. Of course, at that time, we were not very much in compliance. It took us a while to work through it. Her patience, her persistence, was really critical in bringing BYU to where it is today. Whether she was either the coach of it, or then later on as the athletic director, she was responsible for bringing in so many more opportunities for women's sports. She propelled women's sports forward by just being our advocate. So if the football team was getting something, then, well, the girls should deserve to get kind of the same type of treatment. She just kind of demanded that we were treated fairly. She was there just supporting us in everything that we did, wanting us to be successful, wanting all sports to be successful, especially for the women. And she just really did, I think, all that she could to make sure that we got the recognition that we deserved. Someone had to do it. Elaine and I were the only ones available. And so we did what we thought we needed to do to build women's sports and to promote it. I know that when Elaine first started, she was coaching five or six sports early on in her coaching career. But I know that later on, it eventually just 
focused on volleyball and she specialized in volleyball? Well, it just evolved. Uh, I didn't really make a choice. It's schedules became conflicted, so something had to go. Uh, other people came in to help with the coaching and took over some of the sports. She just went about doing what you need to do to be successful, and she would teach people. She was a teacher. She wasn't a yeller. She would help people understand the concepts and what they were trying to achieve, and she would work hard and just go about it in a loving way clean the floors, you know, sweep them down, set up the nets, whatever needed to be done. She just did it because that's what needed to happen. Never drawing attention to herself, never, I think, with any agenda. You know, she reached the pinnacle of her profession in the coaching world and then just naturally assumed this uh, responsibility as leading the women's programs. And back then, as now, BYU's women's programs were among the best in the country. And a lot of that can be tied back to Elaine's time, you know, as a coach and as an advocate for women's sports, and then eventually as the, the director of women's athletics. The women on our team have the honor and privilege to play on Elaine Michaelis' court. And although they didn't get to play for her, we always try to bring out the stories and the history and the tradition that Coach Michaelis laid before our teams. When Elaine retired, there were only four programs that had been to more NCAA tournaments than BYU. Coach of the Year some dozen times. Her overall career, she won almost 80%, 79 point something percent of her overall matches. But I think her relationships that she built was as strong as her schematics and her X and O's of her coaching is that she knew how to bring people together and help them achieve goals and teach them how to be successful. At the recent alumni luncheon that we had, I was able to meet a woman who played in the very first year that Elaine played. And I was privileged to be one of those who played in the last year that she played. And just to see a 40-year legacy and 40-year span of what she's been able to do was really special. And I'm just really happy that they, that they put her name on that court to recognize that. President Hinckley used to say, that people needed to be well-bred and well-dead before they had a name on a building or something at BYU. And so that, that shows how much esteem people have for Elaine Michaelis. In order to get your name on a facility here, you have to be someone of the highest esteem. And Elaine certainly fits that in every way. We want our recruits and our players to understand just how powerful and impactful their opportunity to put on a BYU jersey and play on Elaine Michaelis court is for them and what that represents to the world. I don't think BYU would be what it was without her hard work and dedication and just her love for what she was doing. I think every one of us are grateful and would just say thank you. Everything you've done for BYU and the BYU women's volleyball team will never be forgotten. Everything we have, we owe to you and we hope that we can just be a small part of continuing on your legacy and continue to make you proud by what we're doing on and off the court. I just, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for being the one to give me an opportunity to come here. Coming here really shaped who I am as a person and I feel like guided me for everything else that I've done in the rest of my life, being a mother, being a coach, great mentor for me and just the way that my life has gone. So I thank you for that. You know, I don't know. It just evolved. I was blessed with some talents and opportunities and enjoyed them. And I think when you're having fun and you're enjoying what you're doing, it just perpetuates itself. <laughs>